right, welcome everybody. Metal Monday on a very special Tuesday with Brett. <laughs> Brett was traveling yesterday. We were swamped. Especially in a party. especially in a good way because we fucked up. We could have had a green Metal Monday, or at least yeah. somewhat, in some at least on the PGMs. Um, the base metals were they were okay. Copper. Yeah, yeah. I mean, copper was kind of sideways. Um, so. You know, at the end of the day, you know, it's we have, we got a we got a we got a greenish Monday and we we pissed it away and now we're doing it on a Tuesday, but that's life. Yeah, well, it wouldn't be Metal Monday if it weren't red most of the time for us. So it is red today on Metal Tuesday. Yep. And that copper feels that copper feels real wobbly, man. What do you think, bro? What do you think about copper right now? You know, man, I. I hate making predictions. I do make them just because I'm like everybody else. We're trying to see where this thing goes. I've been selling copper the whole time. Obviously, I may, I think I missed some of the real big upside stuff. You know, maybe like past five, I missed all that. I mean, I passed 490. I missed all that. Um, but as the market comes down, you know, obviously we sold into it. So, you know, we're in okay shape. Um, but it does feel like the it, the the trend is not our friend right now. It seems like it's on the downside, not the upside. So, which actually feels like where Ferris markets are going as well. I talked to some people yesterday, and they don't seem very positive. So, you know, we'll uh, see where this thing goes. But typical summer Ferris blues combined with some non Ferris blues. Why why does summer make them go down? Why why is that? I don't know that it's necessarily summer that makes it go down, but mm-hmm. on the steel side, it just feels like that's kind of how it how it goes because the, the flows kind of turn on throughout the spring, and then if you don't have a good consistent demand, then um, to soak up that spring material flow, then it's just you know it's supply demand right. So yeah. the supply is there, demand necessarily isn't, so it kind of drives the price down. That makes sense. And, you know, P- we were talking earlier, but PGMs are just getting whacked. Like, pl- they had a good day yesterday. They had a good day Friday. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't win them all, you know? And I think, and I say good, I mean, relatively speaking, I mean, palladium is still just in the dirt relative to where it has been. Platinum is holding on, you know, holding strong at that 980-ish number, you know, 950, nine, anywhere between 950, 980 seems like a decent platinum number. Um, anything over a thousand, I think, is good. But palladium still is on the struggle bus. Um, rhodium has got some love over the last week or so. I mean, I, I saw it hit forty six fifty yesterday. I mean, that's a good that's a good sign that there's some life there. I mean, it for it felt like it traded sideways forever. Yeah. Um. So I haven't looked at it hard this morning where it's at, but um, I like just like everything else. I mean, where have you have you looked at uh, rhodium this morning? Yeah, it's forty five fifty right now. It's off a hundred. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, there you go. There's the tail to take. Um, it's like everything, right? It's at least it's trading. At least it's moving up and down. You know, it means it's people are you know moving that material there for a while. I just felt like it was just sideways, sideways, sideways every day. So, okay, prediction, prediction, question. Rhodium okay. we back to ten thousand this year. Ten thousand. Ah. I think that's a stretch this year, unless something dramatic happens in Russia or okay. something. You know, I mean, South Africa has a couple of mines just going way down or something crazy. China picks up a bunch of momentum, which all those things seem kind of like very risky bets. So I, I say no, but, you know, but it, it's, so, it's such a thinly traded commodity that if – it gets a little momentum. That thing can rock it. You know, we've seen it before. So, yeah, it's a very seen. It feels very unpredictable. So yeah, go it could go to the moon or go to the dirt. You know, it could go either way. Yeah, I don't know that it gets a whole lot lower. I mean, maybe like four, but I mean, yeah. it feels like we're kind of just trudging around the bottom right now. Mm. So, yeah, those kind of catalytic converter prices are still just that average price. Per converter is still so much lower than it's been years. Yeah, before. but I think that's the new norm, at least for a while. I mean, it has been that way for a while now, right? So yeah, it's been I mean, that way for a long time now. And um, yeah, and copper, like we keep saying, you know, for you know, four forty copper is not the worst thing in the world either. You know, no, 
No, like it's not. 70 copper again. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think uh, a lot of people would agree with me there. Um, Especially if you bought a lot of copper at 470 in that range of 480, you know, yeah. and you didn't get it moved or you, you right. waited too long, too long to pull the trigger. So I don't think most people did. I think that's kind of what drove the price. I think people were selling into it. I'd be very surprised to see very many people sitting on expensive copper just because I feel like most people traded it is my guess. I don't think there's. Yeah, that's that's what I, you know, what I hear with the people I talk to. It feels like it was traded correctly. Uh, a lot of people yeah. are for the 5, 520 to come back or anything like that. You know, they were. Well, it just gets so expensive to sit on it, right? I mean, you're just, you're sitting on expensive inventory. Yeah, it gets very expensive. Like every purchase, you know, every purchase through our, our yards is much higher now because copper yeah. is higher. And well, and you know, I think like I think this the scrap industry isn't necessarily. I mean, I think there's a lot of people out there that are I don't wouldn't say struggling, but it's it's a tough business right now, right? I mean, with the ferrous markets and pricing and non fair swings. I mean, it's it's a it's a, such a cash intense business, but I think it's a it can be a tough business if you're not really on your game. I mean, flows are still off. I think across the board, so. It is what it is. Yeah, the yards are moving. Slower, you know, depending on how your your recycling company is set up, if you have a lot of outside work, you know, that can kind of help us through these slow times. Yeah. You know, but a lot of yards aren't relying on that. They're relying on the flow into the yard and the commercial scrap. And, and that does still fill off. You know, I've talked to a few demo guys a few manufacturers like it feels like those guys feel like there's a light at the end of the tunnel because there's a ton of bid, bid requests coming through mm -hmm. the are picking up and this is at least for our area here in idaho so that's yeah. a good sign you know like you know, obviously we're still at the like the beginning of this election season you know so like getting through that and to find the where that lands you know it'll be real interesting for 2025 and it feels like if things happen, like a lot of people are predicting, twenty twenty five could be a, a decent rebound year, you know. But I yeah. know I we'll see. I don't hate to predict predict all that shit. Let's just play it. What let's we'll play it one day at a time, one one month at a time, and leave the prediction up to those smart people writing articles on the internet. Well, all I know is copper's down four or five cents today. So yeah, time to go buy copper a little cheaper than you did yesterday, or else you know we'll see what happens. That's right. Well, thanks for uh All right, bro. Thank you everybody. Thanks for Everybody watching. have a great week. Sorry for the late delay, but we got her in. Thanks everybody. All right.